And for those joining us, feel free to introduce yourself on the chat. And if you have any questions, feel free to also type it in. Um, I'm just going to start now. Welcome everyone. I'm excited and I'd like to welcome you to the next episode of UPS Empowering Women Entrepreneurs Summit 2021. I'm Eberi Akadiri. I'm the founder of Rise and Lead Women, an organization that's with a mission to close the gender leadership gap in, in workplaces and in the marketplace. We're based in the Netherlands. Uh, and we're excited to be collaborating with UPS to bring this event to you. And today we are having a fireside chat on the state of women entrepreneurs post COVID <laughs> because COVID has affected a lot of small business owners, especially women. So whether you're a woman small business owner or you're an entrepreneur or startup, uh, we welcome you to this exciting fireside chat. And why are we having this conversation? The COVID-19 pandemic has raised business barriers that disproportionately uh, affected women, women business owners, which includes constraints on funding, access to new markets and overall expansion plans. And this has reversed the gender equality progress we've made so far, especially for entrepreneurial women. Uh, so the question is, what can we, what can be done to mitigate the effects of the pandemic on female entrepreneurs? And for this reason, we've invited high level officials to engage in a meaningful conversation that will result in actionable tips and the way forward. I would now like to welcome our panelists. Thank you for joining me. I'd like to introduce you formally before handing over the mic to you. So our guest is uh, Mr. Olushegu Awolowo. He is the Executive Director, Chief Executive Officer of the Nigerian Export Promotion Council in Nigeria. Under his leadership, and EPC won the ITC's prestigious World Trade Promotion Organization 2018 award for the best initiative to ensure that trade is inclusive and sustainable. Mr. Wallowa is the current country head of delegation to the United Nations Center for Trade Facilitation and Electronic Business. Welcome Mr. Wallowa, it's a pleasure to have you with us. And our next guest is Penny Nats. She is the UPS President for International Public Affairs and Sustainability. Penny started her career at the US Department of Commerce, where she worked for 13 years in various roles, covering international trade and commercial issues. Her roles included leading the Office of Europe and creating strategies to help US companies facing market access challenges in Europe as well as working in both the Clinton and Bush White House on tax forces to, to pass trade deals. Welcome, Penny. It's so great to have you as well. So we're going to go straight to the question. And my first question goes to Penny. Penny, uh, you know that the slow reopening of businesses following the COVID-19 lockdown in different parts of the world has actually reversed the gender equality progress of entrepreneurial women by decades. What is UPS doing to combat this negative effect? Well, first of all, thanks so much for having me and thank you so much for having this, this illustrative panel today. I wanna, I wanna thank you so much for focusing on what I think are really important issues as we look at how we're going to uh, rise and lead coming out of the COVID-19 pandemic. So first off, I just want to acknowledge that not everybody is coming out of the pandemic. We still see the need for vaccines to be distributed globally. And we at UPS are extremely focused on the role that we will have to play in helping provide the life-saving vaccines and medicines to countries around the world as we continue to navigate what is 
what is still a pandemic in far too many places around the world. But then second, um, you know, we're also looking at how do we help people with, with what happens next? So, um, and we're looking at that from a wide variety of, of means. So uh, first off, we're looking at the WTO talks and I listened last evening to the very inspiring interview with Dr. Ngozi talking about her vision and work at the WTO. And so first off is how can we help support her and how can we help support the WTO and governments around the world with ensuring that the rules of trade are fair and equitable, not only for um, the current participants of the trading system, but for those that aspire to it. And for those that aspire to it, it, it it's gonna be, the future is gonna look a little bit more digital than it's gonna look uh, like a, a storefront, a hard storefront necessarily. So those are some of the things that we need to look at and work on and I'll be happy to talk about further later. I think the second thing we're focused on is how do we help provide that very practical advice to women uh, who are thinking about what comes next and how to, how, to take, how to take their business to the next level. So COVID-19 has provided both, it's been devastating for some but there's an opportunity for the Phoenix to rise from the ashes in some cases. And I think we're there to help hold people's hands and to look at what are some of the possibilities for what's gonna come next and how you can take your business and transform it to something that's gonna be even bigger and more sustainable for where the world is going in the future. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Hello. Okay. Thank you for sharing, Penny. Um, and I really appreciate what UPS is doing to support female entrepreneurs. And we're going to come back to more details on how we female entrepreneurs can benefit from what UPS is doing. But first, let me go over to Mr. Wallo. Uh, globally, women entrepreneurs have been hit hard by the COVID-19 pandemic, just like we have said earlier. But we want to know what is the situation in Nigeria and what role does the Nigerian Export Promotion Council play to support women entrepreneurs? Oh, thank you very much. Uh, a very nice, nice seeing you. Uh, let me uh, start by well, apologizing for the last time we were to have a chat and we got the timing uh, totally mixed up. Uh, yeah. I was in another meeting. So let me apologize sincerely for that. Uh, let me thank uh, UPS again. Uh, I just see uh, Penny, please. Uh, and how are you? Nice to see you. Uh, Christina is also online, I believe. Uh, yeah. Nice nice to be online. These are uh, great partners uh, for uh, inter-African trade. And also we're looking at the Expo 2020, where UPS is also doing, doing a lot to help us uh, move our goods uh, out there. Uh, for, for women in, in general, they're, they're our number one uh, uh, customers and priority clients in the NEPC, uh, because we signed up to the ITC, that's International Trade Center in Geneva, the She Trades uh, initiative, we signed on to it. And the commitment was to bring over 200,000 Nigerian women, women owned businesses uh, into global uh, uh, supply chain. And we particularly made it clear that it must, it's not like a woman is the managing director of the company. No, she must own the company. So we are look, those are the companies that we're actually looking uh, to, to support. Uh, interesting that you mentioned our uh, very own dad, Dr. Ngozi Okonjo-Wela, and she was there, uh, here with us in, 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 in Abuja. Uh, she was in our office there. She saw, uh, she engaged with female entrepreneurs uh, that we, we brought over to, to see her. She saw 
many of the, 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 the things that women were producing and were trying to uh, get, get them to feed into the uh, uh, global market. So it's really big for us. With the, with the pandemic, what we are doing is the federal government has uh, looked at it and we launched what we call the Economic Sustainability uh, Fund. Uh, it's a 2.3 uh, uh, trillion Naira fund the government is looking at across all sectors. And in it, we have some funds on the export expansion uh, program uh, to, to help. We've launched uh, one or two of it, the Export Development Fund. We tracked women-owned businesses to apply uh, for that. We are giving them outright grants uh, to help fund their businesses. So we're, we, we are really looking forward to, we're running it on a, on, on, in a grant management uh, portal scheme. So it's transparent. Uh, everybody can see uh, through the whole process. We've, we're running a very robust uh, monitoring and evaluation scheme for this program to carry it along. So we're really proud of this. And I, I know many of our female uh, entrepreneurs will, will have good stories to tell you in the coming months of what is gonna to happen to their business. Uh, most importantly, what the president said he was particularly interested in. Uh, and so we created a new hashtag for that. Our hashtag was uh, from hashtag pandemic to prosperity, because uh, we're looking at taking you away from the pandemic to prosperity. But when we sat with him and we looked at it, he created a new one. So it's now hashtag, because he was worried about jobs. And he said, look, how do we help those that have laid off workers hmm. to get workers back. And then in the subsequent years, how do they employ more? So we created a new hashtag to that, saving jobs, hashtag saving jobs, creating jobs. And that's what we're, we're using to drive this program. So emphasis is going to be on how many jobs you, you add to, you, to, to let go of, and how many, can you call them back? And how many can we create? So that is how we're running, running this, this program. We're also uh, going to be supporting many of our clusters because we have these common facility uh, centers. Uh, we have for shea butter, we have for spices, we have for uh, uh, textiles, we have for hibiscus, particularly many areas where our women are very active. Uh, and, and look, we, we are really proud of what our women are doing. So they need the full, fullest support. And we know when you support a woman owned businesses, you support families, you yeah. support the community, and it goes on from there. So we are, we are really uh, looking forward to working with them. Another area where we're uh, looking forward to working with them is the preferential public procurement advocacy that we're driving. And we're doing this also under an, a, a she trades agenda. And we've gone so far now. Uh, we've had various workshops with the, our Bureau of Public Procurement. And the idea is that, look, reserve procurement, public procurement for women-owned businesses wow. in all the sectors that they're thriving mm -hmm. in. So that is going to be a big one for us. We hope to get it to the, our own Federal Executive Council uh, very soon uh, for ratification. We have the support of the wife uh, or the first lady and the wife of the vice president, uh, the Ministry of, uh, of Women Affairs uh, driving this together with us. And we, we think this will also help uh, women. So we reserve some uh, public procurement for them. So it's guaranteed that they will always get jobs for their, for their companies. And uh, also the, the most beautiful one here yeah, is uh, the one with UPS. Of course, the 40% of shipping cuts through the UPN partnership 
which we want many of our young entrepreneurs, because uh, even through COVID, many of them were, were, were selling through uh, uh, social media, through Instagram, through Facebook. They were selling all their products and they needed now to ship it. And that's where UPS came in. So we kept telling them, look, we have this partnership, sign on to it, and you can get your goods everywhere because UPS, uh, UPS is it's everywhere all over the world and fast uh, service, a delivery service, uh, uh, that too. So we're very uh, proud of that partnership. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is why we always respond to a call from, uh, from UPS. And it is my hope that by next time, it will be a real fireside chat because we're having this chat. I don't see any fire. I don't see any fireplace. I don't see us sitting down, <laughs> sipping coffee or and champagne. Maybe, and maybe yeah. suya. So yes, <laughs> and nibbling on some very nice Nigerian snacks. So yeah. the next time it, we have to make that happen. And uh, we hope we get this pandemic behind us so we can have a real physical fire chat. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, let me leave it at that for thank now. Thank you, sir. I have a lot of questions. I mean, you are doing a lot under your leadership and we appreciate the good work you're doing. Uh, but I'm gonna come back to you to ask a lot of questions. Uh, but for Penny, I know that UPS recently launched the uh, Women Exporters Program. Can you talk us through what it is? Why is it important and how it works? Sure, thank you so much. And I think, you know, it's just gonna build upon what, uh, what we've already discussed today. So when I think about our Women's Exporter Program at UPS, we've partnered up with a lot of governments around the world and we've partnered up with our friends at the International Trade Center on She Trades uh, with regards to their programs in the past. And those are our fantastic programs because what we're doing is we're doing capacity building, we're doing training, we're helping uh, entrepreneurs who want to learn the skills that are necessary to, to, to begin exporting. And that's an expertise of ours in, in UPS. We can provide that. We bring in partners that can provide some of the financing assistance, that can bring in some of the other assistant um, areas that, that people are interested in. But as we were working on it really via a nonprofit basis, um, we, uh, when it came to the shipping piece, we needed to kind of pivot. So we set up our women's exporter program and that allows us to not only help train and, and build the capacity of entrepreneurs and exporters, but also then to help them take the actual step to export. And so again, these are the types of programs that work best when we do it in partnership <laughs> with others. Um, and so working with governments, working with, with other companies that can provide other information and other skills, we can help women with all of their needs with regards to um, in, in the advice they need, the handholding sometimes, because women are brave. You know, we will run through fires for our mothers and fathers, our families, our kids, etc. But sometimes when it comes to ourselves and some of the things that are important to us personally, we, we, we sometimes need a, a little bit of help. And that's where creating these networks, creating the support network, and then via some of the, the, the other things that we do, we can help women actually take that step to export. Because once they do, they go. And particularly, I would say Nigerian exporters, they are incredible. Um, enthusiastic, excited. Uh, it's hard to, it's hard to hold them back. And so, um, uh, and so we love working with, you know, various entrepreneurs in, in various markets around the world. But I would say that in Nigeria, we know that if we run a program like this, we're almost going to have to bar the door because we're going to have so many people that want to come and join. It's, yeah. it's something we have to manage a little bit, but it's, it's, a wonderful problem to have. So that's a little bit about Women's Exporter. It's it's uh, the email address to reach it's a little complicated. I, I usually go in a search engine and look for it. It is something that's available on a mobile device or on a laptop, which I know is important. 
And that way um, uh, we can, we can, there's training available, there's a discount code available, there's various things there that people could go in and take advantage of. Thank you for sharing <laughs> that. I'm very sure we're going to uh, send it to all the attendees. We'll try and find the email addresses. Don't worry. Uh, so I'm going to come back to Mr. Uh, Awolowo. It's exciting to hear what uh, the Nigerian Export Council is doing to support women entrepreneurs under your leadership. When you were saying that, I was wondering, why am I not in Nigeria? <laughs> I mean, I had, my, I had a business in Nigeria for about 12 years before I moved to the Netherlands in 2013. <laughs> I didn't get those opportunities, but I noticed that I left in 2013 and that's when you took over that office. So well done. We appreciate what you're doing. Uh, but I wanted to ask, you know, more about the funds you just mentioned. You know, you mentioned there are grants for, for women entrepreneurs. You also mentioned about the uh, public uh, procurement uh, program. Can you tell us more a little bit about that, please? Uh, yes, um, uh, let me also confirm, confirm with to Penny that yes, uh, you open that door, Nigerians are going to take full advantage of it. <laughs> and particularly the women, they're, they're ready. And uh, it's always a pleasure when I'm, I'm working with them and um, seeing what they're, what they're trying to do. Uh, again, to quote Dr. Okonjo-Wella, she says, look, it's just, it's not just uh, when you empower a woman, you empower a nation. But investing in women is smart economics. Mm. And so that is that basically it. Now, we, the, the kind of uh, program we were, what we're doing, I like to say, you know, at NEPC, uh, we're the only organization that knows what women want. I, 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 I say that because we actually conducted. Uh, an, an, an assessment uh, over the years, over when over two years, finding various challenges for women-owned businesses. You know, yes, top along the range was access to finance. Of course, uh, how do they access finance? You know, without all those limitations that in the uh, not just women uh, businesses, uh, high interest rates are. Uh, uh, are common on this part of this part of uh, Africa. So, how what is their challenge? What do women want? And so, we, we were able to uh, put that together, and so to work on measures of uh, of of uh, helping helping women-owned businesses uh, uh, to try. And one thing that was important that look uh, the connection to global value chains was extremely important. Uh, that had to be done. And, and that is why we were so enthusiastic about joining the uh, ITC She Trades Initiative. Uh, so we're going on with that. We have a number of them where, where that have applied for our uh, um, Export Development Fund which is a pre-shipment fund that we use to help uh, uh, exporters uh, get into the business. We help them with training. Uh, Penny mentioned uh, training. Capacity development is very important and we, we are going to be doing a, a, a lot of it. So we, we, uh, we are doing that. It's under this uh, scheme that they're applying for. Many of them are going to benefit from that. We push them through. Some as well, we have our sister organization, the Nexen Bank, Nigerian Export Import Bank as well. We're going to be pushing them through for uh, those that have scaled up their businesses a bit that need equipment, uh, you know, so that will go under Nexen Bank at very low uh, single digit interest rates uh, that, that won't cripple their business, but will help them to grow. So we're very looking, lo we're looking forward to that. We're looking forward as well, taking them uh, again for virtual 
uh, exhibitions which we are doing now and physical ones, you know, physical ones that will help to promote that business. Uh, we are looking at the Expo 2020 in Dubai, for example, which we have many of our uh, female owned businesses that are interested in going that. Also the creative sector, the services sector are not going to be left behind. We're also looking at the Inter-Africa Trade Fair that is coming on in, in Kigali uh, later on uh, in the year, which is going to be physical. So uh, just to help them, you know, uh, take them across, uh, across the border uh, with their goods. And that's where UPS uh, will be will be coming in uh, as a very strong partner, you know, both in, in, in training and in, in, in helping with the goods and utilizing uh, UPS uh, uh, trade uh, warehouses, you know, warehouses all over the world. So for access to, for their goods and, and trading. So that was, that was a very exciting thing, uh, thing. Christina, uh, came to offer us here in Nigeria. And uh, believe me, we're going to take full advantage of it. Maybe at a time, you will, your warehouses will be full of Nigerian products. You will have space for other products again when we start taking advantage of it. But we're looking forward to it. And we know that um, uh, female entrepreneurs are really looking forward to it. On the procurement issue, like I said, uh, this is where we actually get government to reserve, you know, procurement, uh, public procurement for yeah. women-owned businesses uh, across all sectors. Uh, yeah. There's a percentage that it's only women-owned businesses that can apply for. So that will help, you know, to to lift them, get them into that, that chain. It's uh, uh, affirmative action for women, we're not ashamed of it. We need to get it done. Uh, we need to uh, to push them into that uh, uh, area of public procurement that has been dominated for so long by, well, you can understand, male businesses, uh, male politicians, et cetera, et cetera. But we need to change that. We need to change that narrative. And we know the women are ready. Uh, for for this, particularly even not just goods in the services sector, in 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 uh, in manufacturing, in industry, in furniture building, you know we have female-owned businesses that are, are ready uh, to compete. Uh, mm. uh, you know, you know they, they're ready to compete to to get a, a taste of this. So we will be pushing that. Thank wow. you. Thank you so much, sir. That is absolutely exciting in all the things that you're doing. You know, you said something about when you empower a woman, you empower families and you empower the nation. And also empowering a woman is smart economics, which means not empowering women is bad economics. And we need to really know uh, that is a win-win partnership when you empower a woman. And, you know, this is bringing me to, you know, what you're saying about the exciting partnerships you have with UPS. We love partnerships and we're also always looking for avenues to help women in our community. Uh, so my question I wanted to ask first for the both of you, both uh, Penny and Mr. Wallower is, uh, what, especially for those who are watching or listening, why are public-private partnerships important when it comes to women economic empowerment? Since uh, with all the um, partnerships uh, with NEPC and UPS, you're working closely together to support women-owned businesses. What do you, just to encourage other organizations, why do you think they are important? Let's start with Penny. Yeah, so I think, um... You know, I started off my career, as you mentioned, in the government. So I spent 13 years working for the U.S. government doing both export promotion as well as doing market access. And so I know what government can do and where its value is. And government can help open doors. Government can help ensure a level playing field. And government has other other weight they can put behind initiatives that I think make things 
um, even better when the government is your partner. And, but at the same time, it is business. And so that's where I think that there are certain things where having public-private partnerships and bringing in that private sector expertise, if you're trying to reach customers and you're trying to participate in commercial ventures, Making sure that you're working with partners who understand the market and the business place is just absolutely critical. But if you take the two things together, it's just, it's so incredibly powerful. It's a one plus one equal three effort that happens when you bring the government and the private sector together to help. And um, the final thing I would say is I think sometimes in the private sector, at least a company like UPS, we're in 220 countries around the world. We have so many examples and we have the opportunity to really share that information and knowledge. And while there are a few governments that also have the same kind of spread amongst their embassies and their commercial networks, it's not, uh, we and, and some of the other partners we bring in can really help magnify the reach and provide that information in a way that's that's unique. So we love, we love, we love partnering because the more you partner, the more you can you can build and grow and help more and more people as time goes on. I agree okay. with you. I agree with you, Penny. Partnership even is very important for small business owners. It helps us to increase our reach and make more greater impact. Thanks for sharing. And Mr. Wolo, can you also uh, tell us uh, why uh, these partnerships are important? especially in empowering female entrepreneurs. You're muted. Uh, based on, uh, I must agree with Penny, based on our experience government, she knows government cannot do everything. Hmm. And uh, it's usually uh, better uh, when uh, the private sector uh, is involved in carrying out initiatives it's extremely important. We, right from my beginning when I got to NEPC, I knew that yes, NEPC, even though it's government funded, must be private sector driven. Mm. So we, we were cooperating a lot with the private sector, with the uh, commerce, uh, uh, chambers of commerce uh, here in Nigeria, also internationally uh, with uh, various uh, trade uh, promotion agencies all over the world and uh, various organizations such as uh, UPS. You know, when Christina was in my office and we sat down and we looked at it, yes, UPS is in 220 countries. Uh, the UPS is a monster. You know, it's a monster company. It's, it's not just uh, a, a small company and the ability to, to, to connect uh, through that network. Uh, it, it's, it's a fool that will not sign on to want to partner with uh, UPS, uh, really. You know, very few trade promotion uh, agencies have as much uh, reach, outreach in the world. Like UPS, I can say maybe uh, Taiwan for special reasons that they can only trade because of the one China policy and uh, maybe South Korea, then China, then, then even the, the United States do not have the reach that uh, UPS has, not to talk of the, the, the infrastructure in warehousing and, 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 and planes, you know, to move goods and services all over the world. So it was a no brainer that look, uh, UPS, please, we really want to partner with you. I also made sure that look, uh, NEPC, the Nigerian Export Promotion Council must be, must be uh, uh, totally client centric. Uh, we have to just satisfy our clients. And I, that's what I always tell my, my staff that look, once our exporters are happy, uh, then we're doing the right thing. And so we, the, the, we must always listen to our clients. We must always make them happy. And it's through partnerships like this uh, evolving that we can try and get many of these things done. Uh, and so it's particularly for women-owned businesses, it's, it's very critical. You're yeah, working with the various women groups as well. Uh, the 
uh, the, the cooperatives as well, you know, because they tend to form into cooperatives. So you use that to train them. You use that to organize symposium for them. You use that to, to take them out for trade fair, uh, for buyers fairs, for uh, various, uh, various things. So it's, it's very important that uh, public uh, private partnerships uh, must, must, must work. Thank you, sir. Uh, and before I come to my next question, let me take a question from, from the attendees. Uh, Mayowa, the CEO of Freshly Yours Limited, is interested in knowing more about the shea butter incubation centers mentioned by, uh, by you, sir, Mr. Wallow. Yes, we, we actually uh, responded that um, uh, it can also, people on the chat can send their questions directly uh, to an email at ceo at nepc.gov.ng. So we've put it on, on the chat, on the chat uh, box. But let me just tell him, we, we, we have this uh, common facility centers uh, in various parts of Nigeria where share butter is being produced. Uh, we were running what we call a one state, one product. We have 36 states and the federal capital territory in Nigeria. So we have a, a program we're running with them. Uh, one state, one product, meaning that at every state should at least give us one product uh, to develop for export. We're not limiting them to one product. In fact, many have like five, uh, the minimum three that we are pushing. So we have our common facility centers all, all, all across uh, the share um, uh, butter uh, center. So if he sends an email, we will link him up with, with that uh, immediately. Thank you, thank you, sir, for sharing. Praise has uh, put this uh, email address on the chat. Also, Christina put an email address also for the UPS export program. Please go ahead and copy those uh, information. Uh, so my next question is to Penny. Um, you know, some people who will be watching later or who are here may be wondering, uh, where do I start from when it comes to international trade? So my, I want to know what are the top three things women entrepreneurs need to know before embarking on international trading from your experience? Yeah, so I think a couple of things that if someone's interested, just like you would when you're approaching any market situation, a couple of things. First is you need to do your research. So make sure you know the, if the product you're selling is, is it best to export it directly? Is it better to try to implant it in a global value chain? Um, is it better, you know, how are the different routes you might want to consider? Is it better to go with a distributor? Can you sell it direct? Those are all, I think, important things to understand, but then also make sure you understand if you're going to go export that you know the standards and the certifications you need before you ship to certain markets, as well as, um, you know, sometimes the, the terms that people will use when they ask you to give them a, a bid or a quote price. Those are a couple of specific examples. Again, we have a lot of training. These are things that are actually relatively easy to learn and understand, but are really important when you're making your, your business case and when you're going out to look at exporting in the world. Second is, is that coming out of COVID, I think e-commerce is something that we're really gonna have to leverage whether it becomes 100% of how you sell your product, whether it becomes part of a, an omni-channel solution that you are looking at. So it, combining it with local shops, with something online, looking at the different distribution channels that you can do online, that's gonna be another, I think, really important area moving forward. Different markets do things in different ways. My kids buy stuff off of Instagram. They see something, they click it, they buy it. They don't have to go to a website. It's just immediately purchased. Each market is a little different, but there's some amazing strategies out there that allow you to go very direct to your consumers and your target audience. So that would be a, a second point that I would encourage you to consider. Okay. The last point is to leverage your network, leverage your connections. And so 
look at UPS as just another part of your network or your connections. We've got a lot of information. We've got a lot of people out there that, you know, if you, it's amazing if you pick up the phone and call people what they'll tell you when you just call them and ask them a couple of questions. So be, be um, curious and leverage your network to help you um, with the success that you want to achieve. Well, thank you for sharing, Penny. That's important uh, that we need to do our research, understand what we want to send out. And I believe that, you know, through UPS, because of your market intelligence, you are everywhere in the world. I mean, you are the best partner for every small business owner who is asking, how do I get to this country? How do I get to that country? You know, I just wanted to mention, you know, there's, there's a member in our community, Rise and Lead Women. When we had this event, she told me personally that the reason she likes using UPS is because when UPS ships up goods or products to any country and maybe they encounter troubles or they have to pay extra money, that UPS will settle the issues and then come back to her. So when she tried to use another logistic partner, the logistic partner, once they encounter any problem, they will return the goods back to her. So I, I feel that's your unique uh, uh, selling point. And I, I wanted to just mention it and congratulate you for what you're doing. Well, thank you. And I think the other thing I would say is, is that, uh, again, another network is obviously Rise and Lead as well as I'm sure the National Export Council in Nigeria also has several networks that people can tap into. It's just, there's the amazing potential. Finding those that are gonna be most impactful and helpful for you yeah. is gonna be critical, but there's obviously others on this call besides just UPS. So thank you. Thank you very much. And Raise the Lead is now also in Nigeria. So we will come to NEPC to know how to partner as well. Uh, so this is a question for, for the two of you again. I'll start with Mr. Wolowo. Uh, what are your top three pieces of advice for ambitious and driven women entrepreneurs that can help them to succeed based on your experience? You have to unmute, sir. <laughs> uh, let me congratulate uh, UPS again for that. That's fantastic testimony uh, from a client uh, to you that you you get it done and then you 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 settle after rather than returning the goods or you know causing all kinds of problems. That's that's really amazing. I must congratulate uh, UPS for that. Uh, to our women entrepreneurs, you know, uh, these are the things that women carry you know, in, 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 in bulk uh, all, all, all over the world. You see them, the three words that resilience, you know, women are so resilient to this. And then there's focus, you know, and then they're always interested in getting results. Uh, you know, I, I come from a, a, a strong uh, 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 generation of, of of women, you know, straight from my grandfather, both uh, grandmother, both sides. My my mother, who also an uh, entrepreneur, you know, she was a, she won the first uh, uh, female uh, first designer, best designer in Nigeria way back then. You know, uh, my great grandmother was a business man that supported my grandfather into politics. Uh, by she 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 supported him even for to go and study law in 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 the UK by doing her business, you know. So those are resilience, you know, focus and getting results. So uh, you must not uh, relent on those uh, God ordained skills that God has somehow giving women in abundance, and that's what they should also use. For their for their businesses and just uh, uh, hold on to that and uh, you, you you all know Rome was not built in a day so therefore please continue uh, focus on that resilience focus and obtaining results 
and um, you you will you will go far. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, now, Penny, can you also share from your experience? So, if I could, um, um, I too, my grandmother was a small business person. She made um, somewhat, I would say, not the most elegant um, Christmas ornaments. Uh, she made them by hand and she sold them. And she took the proceeds and she donated them to a charity. She had a um, she, she also was the rent running a resort at a lake. And so she'd sell these out of kind of the gift shop and all the proceeds of these ornaments, she Christmas ornaments she made went to um, a fund for a disease that one of the children that came to this lakefront had. Um, and so over the years, she raised tens of thousands of dollars with her little Christmas ornaments. So I, I, it's almost a, the early social enterprises back in the 1930s and 40s in the United States that my, my grandmother was involved in. She continued on through the years, but it was kind of an a, amazing story of what she did. And when I think about her and how she went forward, you know, she was she was always a very curious person. She'd always ask a lot of questions. Hmm. And that constant curiosity, I think, as entrepreneurs, as business leaders, that that allow you to continue to go forward, continue to refine your products, continue to do certain things. Mm -hmm. Second thing was networking. So when I think about again, my grandmother, she was a networker, and so it was you know where could she go place her things to sell, and. Back then, it was very different than it is today. So making sure you have that network that's helping you with not only learning new things, but also helping getting your product out there, helping introduce you to other people that can help you sell. Network is, is going to be, a, I think, a little bit of your superpower. Mm. The last thing is, we've already touched on resilience, but I would kind of have the, the don't give up because it's that drive to succeed that seems to me to be the secret sauce for most of the really successful entrepreneurs out there. There's a lot of people in the world that are gonna tell you what you can't do. So you've got to remember and keep in the back of your mind and have those that network around you of people who are gonna remind you what you can do and what may not have been successful before, there's the possibility that to, to make it something that's a success. So never to let the, you know, sometimes we have to pivot and move in a direct, another direction, but you've got to, don't give up. Well, these are one two tips for all the entrepreneurs listening. Uh, you heard Mr. Awolowo said, uh, resilience is a top tip for all entrepreneurs. And let me tell you, I'm a Nigerian. We are naturally resilient people. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that's the nature of the country. And he talked about focus as well. You know, pick up something you want to do, focus on it. Don't give up, like Penny said in the big, you know, sometimes people start something, they're not seeing results, they give up. But, you know, staying through the course, just keep uh, pivoting and finding out what works is very important. And he also talked about getting results. You know, if we don't get results on something, maybe you need to try other ways to do it or stop. And Penny also mentioned another important one, which is curiosity. This is, this is a trait for every leader. And if you want to be a business leader, you need to be curious, you need to find out what's going on around the market, around you, around your customers and networking, like you said, which is what we are doing now, which is why we always encourage people to write something on the chat because that is virtual networking. You never know who is going to connect with you and do business with you. So thank you for sharing these tips. And before we finally close, I don't know, is there any question you wanted me to ask that I didn't ask? Uh, so maybe I'll start with Mr. Wallower and then Penny. And if Christina Strula is somewhere here, maybe she wants to come and close the meeting. Thank you. So, so is there any question you, or maybe something you wanted to share that I didn't get to ask? No, no, no. That's that's that that's fine. I totally enjoyed the uh, fire, uh, fireless fire chat. <laughs> so, looking forward to uh, a very nice one after the pandemic is over. 
Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, so thank you very much. And uh, Penny, is there anything that you'd like to add? I didn't ask. Um, the only thing I'd like to add is I'd like to thank both of you for participating today. And then the final thing I would say, and it's because, um, you know, I've lived many places around the world, but today I happen to live in the United States. And for those out there where the, we in the United States have been privileged to have had the vaccines. And um, I know that they're not everywhere yet, but again, our, we're, we're trying to make sure they get to as many people as they can, as fast as they can, working with the producers uh, of vaccines. The thing that I would just like to say to folks is what I'm seeing in the United States is that things are opening up relatively quickly and the pivot that's taking place is happening fast. Mm. So the world is just moving at a pace and a speed for business and for entrepreneurs that's incredible. And so wherever you are, whatever you're doing, there may be a moment now where things are moving, but maybe not as fast. Take advantage of this because when things flip, they're gonna flip quickly. And I'd love to see all of you ride that wave when it comes, because um, it's gonna come, it's gonna come fast, it's gonna come hard and it's gonna come quick. And there's gonna be some opportunities there. So take this moment to learn, be curious, build your resilience and then don't give up. So oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Patty. Thank you, Mr. Wallowo. I've also learned a lot. And this is why, you know, in my own company at Taro Foods, we package spices, Nigerian spices. And we then started building a marketplace for Africans so they can sell in Europe. Now we are, we've seen that people can sell virtually online, you know, like, People can be there in a virtual shop and people can come by, which is why we are also going to come back to UPS for, you know, that kind of partnerships and, and so also to, to you, to all the members who are uh, under your council. And this is what everybody needs to know, do right now. We need to use technology to our advantage. We need to expand. We need to use this pandemic as as an avenue to expand our reach and you know make more revenue and close the economic gender gap. So thank you for sharing your wealth of knowledge. We, we've, I mean, I've learned a lot personally and uh, I'd like to say thank you to everyone who joined us this evening. And uh, now we are closing. <laughs> thank you and bye-bye. Thank you, Penny. Thank you for taking all this time to be with us. I know you're a busy person. Thank you, Mr. Wolowo. I know you're also very busy. I follow you on Instagram. And thanks for joining us. And thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Barry. And thank you, UPS. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all. Take care. Thank okay, so bye bye. I'll be successful. Take yeah. care. Yeah, we hope to see you again in maybe another event, in future events. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Bye. Bye. Okay, so bye bye. Thank you. Thank you.